The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We start the show like we usually do, taking a look at the German DAX. Very quiet over there, a little bit of a sell-off. Nothing uh, being concerned about the possible pandemic. Uh, also, if we take a look at the FTSE, same thing occurred. We had a big ABCD complete up there on the daily charts up there at 7,700. Uh, we sold off about 300 points since that level, and now we're just backing and filling. Folks, there's a lot of news going in the, the system about this uh, virus out here that's going on, the coronavirus. Uh, how much is true and how much isn't, I don't know. but. Uh, you know, remember, uh, these folks have a, uh, a tremendous uh, uh, responsibility here to tell them the truth. But whether they do that or not, I don't know. Uh, there's talk that it's much less than the SARS virus, but it's spreading much, much faster. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know. So we'll move on to the next one. I have a very interesting guest here. Uh, this the last few days, a good friend. He's been a student for several years. This is his third visit out here. Uh, he also likes to go up to Sedona and uh, do some meditation and do some hiking. So he turns it into a little mini vacation. But uh, he really made my day yesterday, folks. Uh, he's made a great deal of progress over the past few years. He's been trying to trade for several years. He tried several different things. And then he started working with me a few years ago. And it's been a, been a long journey, but he's, he's done an incredible uh, incredible job to get to where he is now and he's turning the corner really uh, quite nicely but uh, it really made my day when we were sitting here chatting before and he brought out his uh, he brought out his book uh, of uh, trading in the zone I, and I took a picture of it I'm going to share it with you folks just to show you how important the psychologies of the market really is this is the book I want you to see the tabs that are on this book. I mean, he, he, I think he tabbed every single page because he learned something on every single page. He could write, he could re almost recite that book uh, from memory. And also he spent some time uh, working with uh, uh, Mark's wife, Paula, too. So it was fun. But to see him uh, to do the psychology part and to uh, see the patterns, he's really gotten very good at picking the patterns. So he's turning the corner. He's already turned the corner. So he's, he's doing quite nice. And so it was a lot of fun to, to see him make uh, the transition, and uh, it was really interesting to uh, to watch it. Anyway, I thought you'd I thought you'd get a kick out of that because that book is really a great book. If you'll read a page or two of that book every day, that will uh, anchor you to see uh, where you are, you know, in the market, uh, you know, anchor yourself to say that you really don't know what's going to happen next in the market and you don't really have to know what's going to happen next in the market because you're not going to know. That's basically it. Um, there is a, a, a the Hong Kong schools have been closed. Uh, and if you'll, you can just see the new folks, they, they've shut down the Starbucks and the McDonald's over there. They don't allow traffic coming in to, uh, Hong Kong from China. Uh, the hotels are hurting pretty bad, so uh, I don't know what's going to happen over there. It just looks that you can't buy masks. Masks are impossible. I posted those things that Sarah sent me yesterday where they're taking these uh, plastic bottles and turning them into masks because they're not even they're not even able to uh, get them. Masks that usually cost 15 cents are going for about 10 or 15 dollars U.S. over there, and that, that's a lot of money for those folks. So something's happening. Of course, it's in a lot of different countries. But we're not being told everything, that's for sure. Uh, that's one thing that we can certainly uh, b bank our bankroll on that. That's uh, very interesting. Now, we will have Bill Meridian on. I wanted to share a few charts with you. First of all, I wanted to show you uh, the Bitcoin uh, that one we've been following. We don't do this. I, I don't trade this at all. Tom Hugart does. Uh, and he bought that uh, low down there at 6,800. And now it's uh, breaking out to the upside. And so he's adding to his uh, position in here. And so I think it's important that we take a look at this. 
in relationship to how it looks with gold. Now, I want to get this up here. And I, I'm, hey, I'm just showing you the, uh, uh, oh, do I have a picture of those plastic bottles again? I've got them some. Yeah, I do, Ruby. Just, I know where it is. Hold on. They're in my, uh, they're in my editor here. Hold on. I can find those puppies. Just a minute. Well, I think I can. I don't know for sure. But uh, how do I move these things around here? That's the problem. Uh, where are they? Go down here a little bit lower. Let me try to get these down here. I'll get them down here if I can. No, I can't find them, Ruby. I don't know how to do this darn thing. I wish I could. They're in here somewhere, but the problem, wait a minute, this might do it. Nope, I don't know where they are, Ruby, but I will uh, I will find them uh, eventually and we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to get that uh, a little bit later. So we'll see if that's going to be uh, see what that's going to be going on. Okay, now if you'll give me a second here, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, oh, just a minute, I'm messing everything up here, doing too many things at once. Hold on just a second here, and I will get this thing doing. I've got a. Uh, uh, Hold on, hold, hold. Uh, hey, let's just. Uh, there, Bill is here. Um, uh, we're going to have Bill uh, on early, I think. So if you'll call in, Bill, uh, let's get started. Uh, you know, call, uh, oh, let's get this uh, called. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Uh, 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 testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Bill, are you there? Oh dear, 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 dear. Uh oh, I don't know if I'm in, even on the air yet. Uh, I think we have a technical problem here, boys and girls. Can anybody still hear me? Uh, I think. Uh, well, okay. Well, let's get this straight. I got a little technical problems of when they're supposed to be uh, moving these things on. So. We'll get that on. Uh, I'm still on the air. I just want to make sure that we get Bill on because he's got some great information as always, and I want to be able to do that. I will post that bottle chart again uh, tomorrow, uh, Ruby. Uh, I'll I'll have uh, Sarah forward it to me again. And, well, I've got it. I've got it. I'll just be able to to find it. But uh, but basically, it's a it's a three gallon bottle, plastic bottle. They cut out the bottom of it and use it as a mask. And uh, so it's pretty easy, but we'll, we'll post it up here a little bit later. There, there's a lot of scary, scared things over there, folks. Uh, there, you know, the people is scary, but, you know, we don't know. Hey, it ain't scary till it, it, it hits your family. Then, it, then it's, you know, then it's really dramatic. So just uh, pay attention here to what's going on in the world. You know, they started uh, with the stars only killed, what, about 700 people after all the problems it has had. This one's killed 130 some that's reported, and that's just been in the first two weeks. And uh, so I don't know what that means. We'll see one thing or another. Okay. All right. Uh, if uh, if you want to uh, join the webinar, folks, for tonight, just go to www.tfnn.com and uh, sign up on the sheet there, and uh, you'll be able to uh, listen in. And I think... Uh, you know, I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to be spending uh, the bulk of my time going over the things that I've learned from my good friend Tom Hugard in the past nine months, and some of the some some of the things that we covered in the uh, London seminar. And if you attended the London seminar, this is going to have quite a bit of the same type of information presented a little bit a little bit differently because it, it was really a really, really good seminar. And I think, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research on today. Bill, are you there? Yes, hi, Larry. Hi, how are you, buddy? How's things over oh, there? Are they worried? Are they worried about the coronavirus in uh, Vienna? Not that I know of. <laughs> okay, tell us what uh, we should be looking at, my friend. We had you on about three weeks ago, and uh, as I remember, it was around uh, January the 10th, and at that time, you said that you thought the market was getting ready to top up in this area, and you were liquidating your long positions. Uh, how do we stand right now, and what would you like to cover today? Well, do you have uh, my uh, yes, presentation, I've got page, page two? two? I've page two is up well, right now, you bet. Let me just explain that I've altered my longer term uh, outlook for 2020. First of all, I'm still bearish short term. And we're on a very critical day right here because of that, that decline on Monday obviously left a huge gap. And in the NASDAQ 100, it was a hook sell signal. It went to a new high, then closed below the close of the prior day. And uh, that was Friday that it did that. And Monday, it got the huge drop down. And one of the things we know from Elliott Wave is that that is probably not a completed correction. You're probably, it was probably at least an A wave, so which means you have to B wave retracement, which I think we're in yesterday and today. <coughs> Excuse me. And we should get a C wave down. And uh, that is what I'm expecting very short term. But like I said, this is a critical area. And I could, well, I've got a bunch of stuff I'll run through that shows you how incredibly overbought and overstretched this market is. So stocks likely to fall short term, and we'll see why it's more constructive longer term. Bonds, I've switched to my subscribers from a sell to a buy. The bonds actually bottomed about a week before the cycle did, and they will probably continue up into the second week in February. But it does not look like a bull market year for bonds. It looks like you'll have to trade them back and forth. Gold is likely to continue to rise. It's the same price target I had, 1650 to 1725. And um, the gold cycle doesn't top until about May 1st. So I don't think you have, uh, if you're long gold, I don't think you have much to be concerned about up until May or maybe even for the rest of the year. So if we could go down one more. You bet. 
the cycle schedule, the bullish cycles have dissipated. That The last one dissipated on the 10th of January, which is when I originally thought the high would be. The weekly and monthly cycles, as we'll see, have topped. Now, the 12-year cycle is in a down phase for the first two months of the year, translated Jupiter in, Cap in the early stages of Capricorn. The 1.6-year cycle is in a declining phase until Q1 of 2021. That is the Mars cycle, which is about 1.6 to 1.8 years long. And um, 2020 is year ending in zero. Such years have had the most bearish returns, but I think that will be negated. Uh, that's been a change in my thinking. So first, let's go, let's do the contrary opinion sell signal. Look at the cover of Barron's. Okay, got her up this, there. This tells us the Dow probably will not crack 30,000 on this run anyway. And in terms of the S&P, it has hit two upside Fibonacci projections. I think it's five times 666, which is where this rally started back in 2009. Five times 666 would take us to approximately 3,300. And there's another, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the, it's 1.618 times one of the previous up legs also takes us to this level. So now let's go down one more. And here we have the same weekly and monthly cycles that you've seen. And you can see that they both point down. So this is why one of the reasons I was calling for a down market, and I think that the low uh, is in the last week of February. So yes. let's go down one more slide. There has been a surprise bullish development. Market activity from November through January has found to be a key to what happens in the next year. Uh, now, the reason the... Person, some of the quantitative analysts who detected this, I called them and spoke to them, and I said, I think the reason is because large institutions like the one I used to work with would start thinking about what the market is going to do in the next year around Thanksgiving time, which is the last half of November. By the middle of January, the last week in January, all positions would be taken. And big institutions are not going to liquidate large amounts of stock simply because the forecast does not work out in the short term. In other words, if it's markets weak in February and March and they're very much long, they're not going to change that right away. I think that's what causes this. Another reason is because the effect did not exist prior to 1950, probably because institutions were not big enough to affect the market. So if the market is up in this time period, the market has usually been up in the coming year, and the market was up about 7%. That is a strong signal. Since 1950, if it's up by that amount, you've got, I think, 19 years hit that, uh, hit that level, and all 19, the market was up one year later. So I did not expect this to develop because I thought the top was January 10th, and I thought we'd close January on the, uh, on the downside, but I can see even if we drop sharply in the next, we'd have to drop very sharply in the next few days. So, and then I checked did any of these signals occur in years ending in zero? And the answer was yes, 1950, 1980, and 2010. And in each year, this effect, this November through January effect, overrode the tendency for the years ending in zero to be down. So that has been the big change in my thinking. So to institutions where I would say, I said by the end of uh, this year, the market will be plus or minus 5%, most likely minus 5%. Last week, I shifted that. And I said it is probably going to be plus 5%, maybe even 10%. Why is it not going to be higher? Well, it was just up 25%. I mean, if you did nothing but owned uh, any equity fund, you were up 25% last year with very little standard deviation. And uh, the, the uh, rise in the market on a daily basis, oh, it's, um, it was greatly in excess. Uh, and last, oh, last year, instead of 52, 53%, of all days being up days, which is what our Merrill calculated a long time ago, it was 60-61%. So on all levels, last year was incredibly easy. It was like the pitcher was throwing you know, big softballs up to major league hitters, and uh, they got a hit every time. So let's look at the next slide, which is the 1-4 10-year cycle. And uh, there you see the green one, which is the 10-year cycle. So that to me now is no longer having much of an effect. So let's go down 
to the next slide, here are other cycles, some facts about January going back to 1885. In an election year, the Dow has risen in January 45.5% of the time for zero return. In a year ending at a zero, the Dow has risen in January in only 38.5% of all cases for an average loss of 1.4%. In the six election years that have occurred in years ending at zero, the DJIA has risen in only two of the six years for an average return of a loss of 80 basis points. So now let's, now that I've explained the shift in the thinking, let's go back to the short term. On the next slide, sentiment, sentiment is too bullish. I can, I can just end it right there, but I'll give you, you know, option numbers are bearish on all fronts. Chaitis, we've got to sell something. Oh, yeah, Mary. we've got, we've got to, yes, we've got to pay a few bills, Bill. Would you stay with us for the break here? And yeah, we'll be right back with you. Thank you so much. Bill Meridian, I Cycles Research, folks. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just announced a special 90-minute live webinar taking place this month for subscribers to his Fibonacci 24-7 trading service. On January 29th, from 4 till 5.30 p.m., Larry will be covering how to read supply and demand and how, in combination with his trademark ABCD patterns, you can control risk and maximize profit in today's algo-dominated markets. In this live 90-minute webinar, Larry will cover a hidden in plain sight trend change pattern that gives you early entry into to the trend, how to find and update the key harmonic numbers to trade against in futures, forex, and stocks, how to translate three go-to patterns into supply and demand, and how to use them for entries, the continued importance of the opening price in 2020, and how to use the time of day when taking a position and for entry into longer trends. Sign up now by clicking on the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com and select Fibonacci 24-7. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, do you want to continue, please? We're talking sure. about... Go ahead. Traders have bought an extreme number of call options that just hit a record two weeks in a row. And there's only one other week in the past 20 years that neared 20 million contracts, and that was back in January of 2018. Also, as a percentage of total NYSE volume, excuse me, speculative call buying reached 12.5% of 
NYSE volume last week, again, exceeding the prior week's level, which itself was a record. And it looks like it's going parabolic. And, and on top of that, they have not been hedging by buying puts. So that's very similar to the 2000 top. And let me remind you, I was a fund manager in Abu Dhabi with a billion dollar portfolio of technology stocks. What were they? They were growth and they were big cap, which is exactly what's leading the market right now. Technology was up almost 50 percent last year. I don't think you can expect that again this year. So media sentiment. Markets do not peak on bad news. They peak on good news. And I was just came from five months in the States. And I was surprised by the absence of gloom and doomers at the uh, beginning of late November. There were some, but by the end of December, there weren't any on the news. And active investment managers in the National Association of Active Investment Managers survey are heavily exposed. The most bearish manager has a net long position. The last time they showed that much optimism was in late November and early December 2006. And if you remember when I was on about a year ago, at the beginning of last year, I was stating that these guys were very, very underinvested. Then in June 30, I made it even a bigger point. I said six months, the market's been running up, and they still haven't uh, added enough stocks to their uh, portfolios. So let's go to more sentiment. Wall, East, Wall Street analysts are feeling more optimistic. They're upgrading their price targets on a record number of stocks relative to those downgraded but they're not adjusting their earnings up. So in other words, they're saying P.E. ratios are going to expand. They're lifting the price targets, but they're not adjusting their earnings. And that, that just hit a record. So let's shift over to bonds. And bonds, you can see bottomed on the weekly cycle, it bottomed a bit early to that green line, that cycle bottom right there. Same thing with the monthly cycle. I don't think oh, I didn't put the monthly cycle in here, but they look about the same. And they both top the monthly cycle on the 11th of February and the weekly on the 18th. So I have bought the bond ETF. But if you look at the bond monthly histogram, we're in the weak part of the year. Look where we are. We're in February. We're going into February. And look at March. It's the weakest month of any year since 1980. Uh, this, these numbers go back to 82 or 3. So when the uh, bond cycles peak out in the third week of February, I would, uh, at this moment, I'll, I can say I'm probably going to go short again. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, if, if we go down to gold seasonality, that's based on the last 51 years. And you see, again, where we are, you notice March is weak, but you're not really in the strong part of the year. But if you go to the next, these cycles, these cycles have been reinforcing each other. They have been synchronized. That's the weekly on the top, the monthly on the bottom. They both point up. You don't come to any serious top in the monthly until May 1st. Okay. So here we, we got on the weekly a, a short-term sell signal, but I don't think gold would fall very much. And next I'll have the same old graph here showing how I'm coming up with that minimum 1650 price level. It's simply a breakout from that ascending triangle. Mm -hmm. And okay. on the oil, uh, you can see, I can safely say, I think the top came in early. It's the heavy black line that's falling down off the page is the actual price. And that is the monthly wow. cycle. And I was just on a call with Abu Dhabi on Sunday and they are very concerned about low oil prices. And I said, well, you know, what is, what's the hassle? I, I said, they, they overspent, right? And yes, that's correct. They overspent. And so now oil prices are not high enough to bail out all the projects that they have started. And wow. you add into that the expense of having to have a U.S. military presence Due to the conflict with Iran, this is in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, as I mentioned, I went there two years ago. And the, I was told by the governor of the central bank that the uh, U.S. Uh, had to, the UAE had run up a, a, a defense bill with the uh, with the uh, UAE and uh, the
current administration, the Trump administration, collected. So that was a large outflow of cash. And plus that, you know, they had to borrow $30 billion to bail Dubai out of its real estate collapse years ago. And so there's a real liquidity shortage down there. And if there's going to be instability, which I predicted from political cycles in the Middle East, this is not going to help at all. And uh, the conditions in Iran are, are very dire because they're spending, I was just reading this morning, an intelligence report that they're spending lots of money to control Syria. And meanwhile, people at home, you know, and hell with Syria, keep the money at home. So they're having a lot of unrest there. Wow. Bill, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, do you still believe that the president is going to get through this uh, uh, impeachment? We talked about this six or seven months ago. You thought that he was going to be able to get through it. Is uh, that still your feeling? Uh, yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, what makes me nervous about this is the way they've set this up is um, none of those people in this procedure are— um, Friends of the president, I don't think, and this includes um, Justice Roberts, because mm -hmm. I remember when they swore him in, he appears and sounds conservative, and then he mentioned a book that's one of his favorites, and it's written by someone who believes in one world government on the Council on Foreign Relations. And then, of course, there was his vote on the Health Care Act that um, got the American people stuck with it. And so, uh, no, I'm not too... Uh, uh, not to opt a lot of these people who are picked like Romney and uh, Collins, they're all what we call rhinos, Republicans in name only. But I don't think, uh, from what I've been told by the experts, this can't uh, stick. So, I uh, know I don't think he's going to get impeached, but uh, the eclipse next December is exactly opposite his son. And the last presidential candidate who had something like that, an eclipse opposite the progress son, was Romney. And I ignored that at the time. And so, judging by what I saw in the states, I don't think he can lose an election. So, what are the possibilities that he gets elected and doesn't finish his, his term? I mean, I'm trying to resolve this, and uh, of mm -hmm. course, it'll be much easier when I know who he's running against. But, mm -hmm. but most of the people there, when I was in New York, these were people who were very uh, undecided about him and now firmly pushed into his camp because they see what the Democratic Party is offering, and they don't want that at all. Mm -hmm. So, they'll vote for him again. But this whole procedure, I mean, to be impeached by a secret whistleblower whom you they won't name and you can't question or confront uh, is absurd. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, hey, listen, lots well, of absurd wanna, things happen. We want to thank you for coming on. I sure. posted your information that they can reach you. So, Bill, thank you so much. Sure. We'll have you on sometime in February okay. if you have the time. Okay, my friend? Sure. Okay, you thank bet. you, Larry. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research, uh, Vienna, Austria. Devil may care type good guy if you've ever met one. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I've posted the uh, two pictures of the uh, uh, of the folks in China, how they're using these plastic bottles to use as masks, since masks are unavailable, they're sold out, and it doesn't look like there's going to be any. Uh, so I think that's uh, relatively important. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. You don't see them. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's do it again. I know I posted them in here. I'm sure I, well, I'm not sure of anything anymore, but let's get this up here. There's the first dude. Oh, right, that's that one. All right, give me this one, and then here's another one. And then we will get on, and then we'll talk about this New York Stock Exchange Index chart because that's an interesting one to look at also. Here's the second picture. Uh, that's a little child with his uh, mother and uh, with a plastic bat bottle over their head. And uh, then they're also wearing masks inside the plastic bottle. So uh, the folks over there, they're quite scared, folks. Uh, we, I have a friend in Wuhan, uh, China, and uh, I know that those folks are quite scared also. Uh, and we don't know whether the figures are correct coming out of there. I mean, you stop and think this thing is spread so quickly that you don't know whether it's going to be something really dramatic or not. You know, I don't know. You never get the news, but watch the charts. What we've done so far, you'll notice the chart on the New York Stock Exchange Index. We had that big top that we talked about on Friday when we had the 1.618 expansion on the S&P at uh, 33.55, and then we broke 100 handles. Uh, down to uh, 32 uh, 25 and we rallied up about 80 handles uh, up to almost a 61 percent retracement level that comes in around 33 uh, 3300 so that's it so that's it uh, I'll put that NYSE chart back up again because I think it's important and the reason why it looks important is if you'll take a look at the gap you see we've tried to fill the gap now we filled the gap in the Nasdaq and we filled the gap in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We have not fi uh, filled it yet in the cash S&P uh, nor the uh, the Dow Jones. So uh, that was an interesting one to see what's going on. The Russell is by far, if you're going to pick something to sell, pick the Russell because that's the weakest of all the four indices. It's a number two. You know, Dow Jones is uh, the last of the four. The number one is the S&P. Number two is Russell. Number three is NASDAQ. And number four is the Dow Jones. And all of those... Uh, but the, the, the basically, the open interest in the S&P yesterday was unchanged, but it was down big in the NASDAQ and also in the Russell and also in the Dow Jones. It was only the S&P had a marginal. I mean, with 2.7 million, I think it was like, uh, I think it was maybe 5,500 or something. It was really a very small uh, small increase, which is not bearish, considering we had this uh, huge rally. But I did want to show you something that I, here's what I do when I when I have these earnings. I don't trade these, but I look at this because I, I do look at the NASDAQ and the S&P. And when the earnings come out, I want to see what's going on. And if you take this hourly chart, which goes over the last three weeks, look at this beautiful uh, three drive to a top pattern. That's also a one, two, three, four, five expanding trend. 
triangle right up at the high at 32, 327.92. Uh, that was a 1.27 expansion of the move from the 22nd down into the 26th. So, and I know we're trading a little bit below that right now, but it, it, it's interesting that it hit those patterns. It's uh, it's because it, they do follow, and I believe that these markets are normal, they're natural, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I don't think anybody is in control of them. The Fed can certainly you know, make things move at a certain time if they want to do that. But frankly, I think it's natural law. Uh, remember, we're going to have Shane Smullyan on, on Friday. He's going to spend a great deal of time showing us uh, how the Fed, uh, you know, d d does these operations and, and what it means as far as uh, how, how the markets move. And here is, here's something that uh, was sent to me by our good friend, Rich Anderson. <laughs> okay, hold just a second. Let's get this up here. Uh, of Anderson Capital Management. Look at the, uh, you'll see the red line is the uh, S&P 500. Uh, and you'll notice that the Fed balance sheet is the one in green. And, you know, there's been a little divergence here in the Fed balance sheet uh, since 2017. So these markets are going up because they've had more buyers and sellers. That's what it amounts to, folks. So where it keeps going from here, we'll have to wait and see. That's uh, that's the bottom line of what we're looking at. The gold market, uh, we, we've had some really strong support down here at uh, 1562. And we had a nice $13 rally this morning. If you get the video last night, you'll see that we pointed that out, that there was going to be some pretty good support there and also in the platinum. Both of them lined up exactly perfectly, and that's it. Uh, Peak is asking me if the central bank is suppressing interest rates. How can it be natural? Peak, I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. All I'm doing is price action. I, I, uh, I've really trained myself not to try to think in those terms because it, it, it clouds my mind. All I want to do is see the bar chart. And uh, when I do get into trouble is when I start listening to this stuff. You know, when the, the Jap when the when the Hong Kong market was bottoming in August, that's when all the protesters start, and they were throwing Molotov cocktails. Well, you'd think the market would go down. Well, the market rallied all the way up to the 78 percent level. Now, uh, with the uh, the this flu that they've got over there, it's down three percent. Do you realize if we were down three percent on a Dow trading at uh, 2,900, you'd be looking at a 700 point drop? And at two days in a row, you know, uh, that hasn't happened here. So we'll see. We'll wait and see. Here's a great quote by David White from Richard D. Wyckoff. And we're going to have possibly uh, Jim O'Brien, who's an old-time guy about my age and does the Wyckoff work. We might have him on next week as a guest. This is from Richard Wyckoff back in the 1930s. Unless you completely discard all news reports, tips, corporate statements, crop situation, and other types of news, you'll be unable to get the best results from your market operation. Richard D. Wyckoff. Okay, fundamentally speaking, the charts don't lie. I like that one, Marshall. That's a good one. When prices are going up, there's more buying, and when prices are going down, there's more selling, and that's how it ends the game. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Uh, we talked about the crude oil in the video last night that we were getting up in this area for really strong resistance into that gap at 54. We got to 54.34. We dropped a dollar a barrel this morning. So if you were able to get in on that, that would have been a nice thing to uh, look at. But we're going to have some great volatility in these markets, folks, because it's really going to be uh, really, really quite exciting. So it's going to be a fun day here in the Old Pueblo. Uh, weather is starting to uh, warm up a little bit. By the way, we have the big jewelry show coming next week. If you want to buy some nice jewelry for your girlfriend, send me some cash, and I'll do some shopping for you. I can get synthetic diamonds we could pass off as real ones. No, they don't do that kind of stuff here, but uh, it's a lot of fun. They have 40,000 dealers coming in, and it's, uh, it's a fun 10 days here in the old Pueblo, so we'll see what's happening. Uh, someone's asked a question about the hogs. Ruby, the hogs, once we broke that, that 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 bad close on Friday, that was certainly telling you that something was wrong. We went limit down, I believe, one day, and then we, we bounced a little bit. But none of these commodities uh, are showing any signs of bottoms right now. And uh, when they do, then, you know, we'll take a look at them. But right now, they're, they're, they're breaking down. Even the wheat that, you know, was a sell up there at the uh, 591 level is, bro is broken you know, more than 40 cents. That's a lot. So, and that's partly because China is pretty much out of the market. They, they've shut down that country. You know, they're, uh, it's really, and you, do you know that we still have flights coming in from China? 
Can you believe that? I mean, I can't believe they didn't stop that stuff. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all, especially since this uh, flu is relatively contagious and has a long incubation period. But that's the end of my medical uh, training for today, folks. Listen, uh, we're going to take a little break here, I think, to pay a few bills. When we come back, I'll talk to you about uh, a little bit more about the webinar and that I'm going to do tonight, and uh, we'll see what happens. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of gold up here. Uh, the reason for the seminar uh, tonight, the webinar, is that uh, I've been working with Tom for since 2003, uh, but he has made such a transition over the last six or seven years that uh, it's it's really amazing to see what he does. He does things differently. He trades really strong trending markets, which I've always had a difficulty with. And after watching him operate for about six or seven months, uh, I discovered something uh, also with the help of my good friend John Jameson and we saw a pattern in there that looks really interesting and so we did a seminar with uh, Tom and David Paul in London and it turned out very nicely and since that time we've made some even greater uh, 
ideas uh, to help trade some of these things. So that's part of what I'm going to be looking at. Uh, we've been talking about harmonic numbers, uh, the opening price, and each each end of each different uh, entity has a, a different uh, pattern for the opening price. For the euro, it happens to be 30 minutes from the opening in the FX. Uh, for Apple, it's uh, 15 minutes. There's there, there's just one that just really it fits out there, fits nicely. In other words, most of that action comes in the first 15 minutes or 30 minutes, and each one's a little different. And we're putting together a little uh, uh, a pamphlet to show you which ones these are. So you'll get that a little bit later if you subscribe uh, to the webinar and see. But I think you'll enjoy it. You will learn something and you'll make some money off of it, I believe. That's what we do these things for. So if you do get a chance, try to come in and listen to it. And I think uh, you'll like it. We'll have some follow up, of course, and see some of the things that are happening. We're going to see some incredible volatility here, folks, these coming months, uh, much more than we've ever had before. Uh, part of the reasons are the things that Bill Meridian just talked about is the contrary opinion and the, you know, the fact that we have the pictures of Barron's uh, 30,000 on the Dow. I can remember when, uh, what was that guy's name? Bill, uh, Bucky Dent, what, no, Bucky Dent was a baseball player. Harry Dent. Harry was talking about a 30,000 Dow when the Dow was at uh, uh, 1,500. So, uh, uh, well, that's only 3,000 in the Dow. That's not 30,000. That's a little farther off to see. So we'll take a look at that. Anyway, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. We'll see you. Shane Smolian will be on tomorrow, not Friday. Tomorrow will be Shane.